Hello everyone, Ben DiBono here. And you'll notice things look a little different on the screen today because I don't have my outline up in front of me and that's because we are not actually talking about a question and summa in this video. No, today is January 28th, which is the feast day of St. Thomas Aquinas in the Roman Catholic uh, liturgical calendar. So I thought I would just make a brief video commemorating that since, of course, Thomas Aquinas is rather important to us here at Reading the Summa. In fact, we wouldn't even have anything to discuss were it not for him. Um, so given that uh, this project to get through the whole Summa is probably going to take, you know, three, four years when all is said and done, uh, it's going to be a lengthy venture. We'll hit a few of these. So I figured, you know, just every year, let's just make a short video and uh, talk about something. Uh, to commemorate the feast day of St. Thomas. So I thought what I would just talk about briefly today is um, you know, uh, just share maybe some inspiration for us from St. Thomas's life and his sainthood. And I think it's important to remember, especially as we are so deep into the Summa and this stuff gets really dense and really complicated and, you know, we've had objections and uh, articles and stuff throughout where I'm just kind of throwing my hand just like I don't quite get what he's talking about here it's so dense and so intellectual but it's also important to remember that you know, St. Thomas is revered as a saint in uh, a number of traditions uh, including Catholicism and Lutheranism or at least some Lutherans I I don't have an exhaustive knowledge of, uh, of that but I, I uh, was just reading that he's revered on the ECLA or uh, yeah the is it ECLA or whatever it is, uh, for their calendar of saints. And so Thomas Aquinas is important across a number of uh, Christian traditions, not only as an intellectual, but as a saint, as somebody who is to be a spiritual example for us, not only a teacher, but a guide, a uh, uh, somebody we ought to look to in our faith as an example of how we are to act and how we are to live. And I was thinking about this some, and uh, I might have shared this story a little bit in some of the introduction stuff, uh, but we'll at least look at it from a different angle here. That You know, when Thomas Aquinas was a monk, um, his teacher, Alfred the Great, uh, and his fellow brothers dubbed him the Dumb Ox. And part of it was because he was quiet, he was kind of a slow thinker, you know, obviously he had a lot going on. So people who, in his mind, so people who, who think more than they talk often kind of come across as stupid, even though, at least in this case, and, and many others are anything but. Uh, and he was uh, apparently a very large individual. He had to have his desk modified at some point in his life for him to um, be able to continue working at it, you know. Probably not large by today's obese standards, but hey, back in the Middle Ages, you know, he's uh, obviously had a fairly sedentary lifestyle. And so you have this overweight, quiet, seemingly slow thinker, and he gets dubbed affectionately, we might like to believe, the dumb ox. And Alfred the Great has a wonderful quote where he says we something to the effect of, we call him the dumb ox, meaning us at the monastery. But in time, his bellowing will be heard around the world. Uh, and what an important reminder that is to us, both to value others and to value ourselves in what seems to be shortcomings may just be uh, the appearance on the outside for something very deep and profound going on in the inside. Now, of course, most of us aren't going to change the world like St. Thomas did. Most likely none of us will even get close to that. But that's not really uh, the inspiration I think we're meant to draw from that story. I think that the inspiration we're meant to draw is that we are called to be saints. And that we ought to look to somebody like St. Thomas as an example of what this will look like. Being a saint doesn't necessarily mean rushing out and doing everything all at once. It can be this slow build in your life uh, to make whatever that meaningful impact is on others to uh, continue to cultivate that sanctification within yourself. However that looks, whatever sainthood looks like for you, which it's not going to look the same as it did for St. Thomas or anyone else, 
But whatever that looks like for you, don't let the fact that maybe you literally or metaphorically appear dumb and stupid and fat on the outside stop that sanctification process on the inside. And so it's a good reminder to us on this feast day of St. Thomas to remember that while we revere him as a giant, his contemporaries didn't see him that way. And perhaps he himself went through times of self-doubt where he didn't see himself that way. Many of the great saints do, all the way up to Mother Teresa, who was racked by doubts throughout her life. Uh, and I, I certainly don't think she saw herself as a saint. But to, you know, to use those examples to allow sainthood to be cultivated in us. I think even more than the study and uh, the intellectual side of St. Thomas, that would be an important lesson for all of us who revere him to take away. All right, so that's it. That's really all I wanted to say, uh, just to commemorate this wonderful feast day of a wonderful saint. So St. Thomas Aquinas, pray for us, pray for us, our sanctification, uh, that we may become more like Christ through following your example. And for all of us, may we who are in our own ways, dumb oxen, uh, continue to bellow in whatever particular way God would have us to bellow doing so, change ourselves and uh, make whatever impact on this world we are called to make. All right, so that's it. And I will return with question 15 uh, today or tomorrow. But for now, it is important to pause from our studies and commemorate this very important day of a wonderful saint. I will see you later.